Hey guys, it's Hydratech here. In this tutorial video, I've chosen uh, one cool preset from uh, my latest soundpack uh, cipher. It's a sort of uh, futuristic uh, sequenced neuro bass. I've prepared uh, a, a short musical example. It's uh, an 8 bar loop with uh, other musical elements, other sample loops taken from my other soundpacks. I will uh, break down each element uh, briefly. I'm gonna play it in free. Two, one, let's go. The sound we are going to recreate today is the one labeled red. Let's listen to it in isolation. As you can see, there is a lot of stuff going on. There are four macros assigned all moving in different ways to create interesting textures and movement in the sound. Also, there is the mod wheel involved too, and I will explain step by step how I came up with this sound called Mechathron. I chose this name because in some ways it resembles the Megatron Transformer, but it's a compound name made of words Mecha and Thron, which are two of my sound packs. So that's how I came up with the name. I think it's a, a cool sound with uh, some uh, interesting uh, sound design techniques that uh, I wanted to discuss. And uh, hopefully in the process, you will come up with uh, some uh, inspiration to create your own uh, unique sounds. But before starting the preset recreation, I'm gonna break down uh, each element of this loop quickly. So there is uh, a drum loop, which is the main groove element. There is a second drum loop, which is basically the same, but uh, processed with uh, some uh, reverb or stuff to make it uh, like a groove shadow in the background. And together with the main beat, Also, I'm gonna isolate the background elements, which uh, even in this uh, super loud beat, which is at minus five LUFS, uh, create some depth and the musical interest. There is this uh, wind chimes uh, background uh, layer. This plug. This reverse lead. And this uh, pad or uh, atmosphere uh, sound. Let's hear in, uh, in context uh, again. Yeah, it's very loud, uh, probably YouTube will hate me for that, but uh, I like uh, for artistic choices to go that loud because I like the sound of uh, saturation and uh, aggression coming from extreme compression. But yeah, e it's just a personal choice. One cool trick I did for the pluck was to create uh, an audio rate modulation with the auto pan. So basically it's a square wave auto pan modulation. So if I slow it down, it sounds like this in isolation. So the sound jumps from the left and the right channel quickly. But if I put the rate at the maximum value of 90 Hz, it also changed the, the timbre as well creating this sort of uh, evil effect. For the reverse lead, 
what I did was uh, first, uh, let's see how the sound was uh, in its original state. Yeah, basically I just reversed it, played one octave higher, and used uh, an all reverb. Then there is this uh, atmospheric soundscape from my pack uh, Angel. I just uh, removed the low end so that it uh, doesn't interfere with the main bass with an auto filter. And there is some uh, sidechain compression from the bass as well. Actually in parallel, not um, at full 100% uh, dry wet. But yeah, the main actor of this beat is uh, the bass sound we are going to recreate today, which creates uh, this uh, sequence in uh, C minor, spanning uh, one octave. And also at the start of each new note, uh, there is uh, some pitch band going on as well. So it creates this... Uh, really cool sliding effect at the start of each note. By the way, my pack cipher, which uh, contains 100 presets uh, like this, uh, accompanying samples, uh, custom wave tables, uh, and a lot of other cool stuff for Vital, is discounted at 40% off right now. I've cranked up a special offer for bedroom producer blog readers. The link is in the description of this video if you are interested. But uh, this particular preset, uh, the custom Vital skin uh, I've designed, and uh, the accompanying uh, custom wave table called uh, Megatron will be given for free. Without further ado, let's get started. So here we are in a fresh opened session of Ableton at 174 BPM because I'm going to use some synced LFO. So if you want to get that exact result that I'm getting, you have to set this BPM as well. I have initialized the patch. A basic Sawtooth wave to start with. I chose the Megatron custom wave table for the first oscillator. It's a complex, uh, rich sounding wave table, so I'm gonna pick up the exact frame that uh, I chose for, the, for this sound. First, let's uh, bring it down by one octave. Shift click, minus 12. I've chosen uh, this uh, 147 frame to start with, but I'm going to modulate it later with some macros uh, and some other stuff. I bring down the level a little bit. I'm gonna assign it to both filters. Select Vocode under the Spectral Morph knob and bring it down to 26%. I'm gonna choose a band under the wave morph tab so that uh, later I can use it to further modify this uh, wave table. But right now I'm gonna leave it at uh, 50%. For the second oscillator, I've chosen the water razor wave table under the Glork Glank factory wave tables one octave below again but uh, I want it to be a very slight texture something like that and also I bring up the unison value to 3 so it's more spread out again I'm gonna choose band for the second oscillator wave morph functions but uh, I'm gonna modify it later. I will assign it to both filters again. For the third final oscillator I've chosen the classic fade 
wave table under the factory tab. It's a wave table which uh, starts from a triangle wave, morphs into a sawtooth wave, and finally it blends into a square wave or pulse wave. I've started uh, with um, a sawtooth uh, kind of uh, in-between wave, something like that. One octave lower. Let's adjust the volume a little bit, uh, the level of this uh, oscillator. I bring up this uh, unison voices to 11, but less uh, unison detune. Here I will select FM from oscillator number 1, but uh, deactivate it because uh, we will use it later to add uh, further texture and aggression in the sound. Let's leave it like that right now. And this goes straight up to filter number 2. Then I've layered a sample of white noise, it's the default one selected, to um, really create a gritty distorted noise layer which uh, sounds uh, cool and uh, adds uh, top-end uh, rich uh, enhancement to the sound, but I want uh, a very slight level because it will sound uh, very prominent later when distorted. And this goes to filter number two. Let's adjust the default settings of the main sound. So envelope number one, I want uh, the quickest attack, full sustain and a quick release as well. 0.1 uh, is, is fine. Also here, in the global settings, I will choose one voice, since it's a monophonic patch. 12 under the band, so I, I've got a full octave to play with the pitch band. Perfect. I want the spread to be at 50%, so it's not too spread out uh, on the stereo field, since it's a bass sound. So this is the basic tone to, to start with. Let's get to the filters. For filter number one, I've chosen the dirty 12 dB of slope low pass filter. By the way, if you click on the, this panel, you see the cutoff and the resonance values straight away. So cutoff at 260 Hz is fine, but I want more resonance a really extreme value of 99%. So later it will bring uh, some tonality to the sound. Full drive, full mix and uh, negative uh, key tracking. So if I play higher on the keyboard, the filter goes down. But if I play lower, it will uh, sound uh, more open in the higher frequencies. Because I wanted to create uh, a different tone and character depending on the note you play. For the second filter, I have chosen the comb low high comb filter. Blend at 1. Serial filter coming from filter number 1. So. I'm gonna click uh, this button here, fill, fill 1. I'm gonna choose uh, 550 Hz of uh, cutoff value, something like that. Resonance at 78%, high cut, and this time a positive key tracking. So it goes uh, on the opposite side of the first filter. But right now I want it to be disabled. So I will uh, bring down the mix to 0%. I will use this uh, second filter later to bring in uh, extra character and uh, texture with uh, some uh, macro assignments. Now going on the effects page, let's start with the distortion down sample. Adds uh, some uh, top end uh, texture on the sound which sounds cool. So I'm gonna crank up the drive at 11.5 dB, something like that. Bring down the mix to 
I use a post filter to tame some of the harsher top end frequencies without with it sounds uh, like uh, it's uh, actually filtered out so it's uh, more sweet sounding less harsh but also it brings in some uh, fuzz perfect now let's bring in the main filter effect i want the sound to be very present in the lows and in the highs but scooped out in the mid frequencies so that uh, it leaves uh, some uh, space in the mix to add uh, some uh, extra sounds uh, in the mid-range but also it's part of the character of the sound i've chosen the digital notch blend filter with the blend at uh, 0 0.38 something like that so there is a notch in the middle of the spectrum cut off lower at uh, 64 hertz but actually with the negative key tracking it's uh, higher than that so it doesn't uh, cut out uh, the lower frequencies that uh, of course we need in this sound six dbs of drive i want a small resonance value of 11 percent With all this uh, key tracking uh, we've applied to these uh, three filters, this one is uh, inactive right now but we will listen later, listen how different uh, each note uh, sounds. This uh, creates uh, an interesting tone variation I would say. Next, I'm gonna apply a ping pong delay to the sound. The quickest value of 1 over 64 for both channels. To add a sort of metallic effect. Let's bring down the cutoff so it's a bit darker. 50% of feedback is fine, but I want a lower mix of 20%. Next, the main component of this sound, the multiband compressor. This uh, excites the sound and uh, really compresses it and brings it uh, forward thanks to the OTT configuration, which is uh, the combination of uh, downward compression and upward expansion. I want uh, the lows and the highs really compact and compressed, but I want the mid range to be more expanded so i will uh, adjust uh, those sliders uh, to reflect that so it will be something like that So as you can hear, the lows and the highs in the sound are more com compressed, but the mid-range is uh, more expanded. Here in the advanced page you can see that uh, we've got a really rich sounding uh, bass sound spanning the whole spectrum, but more uh, scooped out in the mid frequencies. Next, I'm going to apply a chorus, 8 voices, 4 over 1 the tempo is fine. I will high pass it and adjust a little bit the settings.
Next, let's EQ the sound to balance it a little bit and shape it the way that we want. So I will bring up the lows at 50 Hz. Low shelf is fine. To really reinforce the fundamental of the sound. For the middle parametric band, I wanted to cut a little bit more of the mid frequencies at around 900 Hz something like uh, minus 3.5 dB. And uh, reinforce the highs as well with the uh, NI shelf. Starting from uh, 3 kHz, which is the range of uh, aggression in the sound, I would say. Yeah. Next, I'm going to apply phaser, but uh, disabling it uh, because uh, we are going to use it later. At the default settings, uh, is uh, fine. This will act as another state of uh, notch filter and uh, movement in the mid-range of the sound. And finally, before getting to the modulations, I've used a short reverb to bring in some space in the sound. I've cut the lows so that we've got a tight low end. I've gone for a big size of 83%, one seconds of time but uh, a small mix value of uh, 9%. So this is the tone to start with, and then we are going to bring the sound to life with some modulations. I wanted to create a sweeping effect at the start of the sound with an opening envelope, then a repeating stuttering effect thanks to the LFO which starts later, so there is this cool uh, counterpoint between uh, the envelope modulation and the LFO modulation. Let's start with the envelope number 2 settings. I've chosen a slow attack of uh, 0 0.9 seconds or so, with uh, an exponential shape, 0 0.3 seconds of hold, 0 0.13 seconds of decay, no sustain, and uh, 0 0.1 seconds of release. So we have this uh, cool uh, ramping envelope which uh, holds uh, for uh, a while and then uh, stops uh, suddenly and then uh, it uh, will be replaced uh, by the LFO movement later. Let's assign it to the filter effects cutoff by full amount. So there is this uh, sweeping filter effect next to the compressor release so it uh, sounds more dynamic in some ways and finally to the distortion mix but now let's get to the LFO modulation I have started uh, from the sine factory LFO shapes, which has this icon enlightened, so whenever you add the new points, it creates this cool rounded shape. I've gone for this type of shape, but you can experiment on your own. By the way, if you hold down Shift on your Mac or PC, you can adjust all the shapes at once. Trigger mode is fine, 1 8 the tempo. I've gone for uh, 0 0.8 seconds of delay, so it will act later after the envelope modulation finishes, and also some stereo to create uh, a cool stereo effect. This knob uh, offsets uh, the LFO cycle between the left and the right channel, that's how it creates uh, a stereo movement in the sound. So to start with the assignments, I've assigned it to the OSC1 band mode by full amount. Next to the distortion filter cutoff, 
by full amount as well. Distortion filter blend by 0.4. Also to create uh, a dynamic uh, top end in the sound, I've assigned to the gain of the high bend in the Q section by a negative value, like a sort of a dynamic EQ in a creative application. Next to the OSC1 fine here, let's go to the matrix, find the highlighted modulation, it's this one. I've gone for a bipolar modulation of uh, 1, so actually it starts uh, lower than the centered 0, so it will sound more flat and uh, it's part of the character. So it's not perfectly in tune. Next, I've assigned it to the OSC free level. So the sawtooth comes in a bit more, but in a dynamic way. Next, to the filter number one cutoff by negative full, so it uh, closes. And finally, to the third oscillator with table position. Actually, it's uh, still a sort of wave, but uh, it's uh, unstable, so the tone is, uh, is moving. So that's all for the main patch, but uh, let's bring in the macros as well, so that we can customize and uh, really extend what we can do with the sound. I have assigned the first macro to the filter effects cut off by 50 so that we can sweep a little bit more this notch filter. But also in tandem with the post distortion filter. I've called it the Yay macro because uh, with the distortion filter more open, it uh, brings in uh, the main character from the down sample distortion, which uh, sounds a little bit like a Yay dubstep uh, bass sound. Next, our second macro will be the tone macro that will provide a lot of cool tone variation in the sound. So first I've assigned it to the level of the first and the second oscillator by full amount. You would ask why I've done so instead of, uh, I don't know, like uh, bring it up the output gain. It's actually different because since we have applied a lot of um, non-linear processing in the sound, with a lot of uh, distortion, compression, and so on. If we bring in extra input gain, the tone will vary as well. Also, I wanted to modulate the bend of the first two oscillators. The first by full amount and the second by less, something like uh, this. And finally, I want a different wave table position for all three oscillators. You can experiment, of course, but uh, these uh, are the settings that uh, I went for. So for the first, uh, something like uh, minus uh, 68. For the second, the positive uh, 182. And for the third, uh, I went for minus uh, 59. So it uh, transforms into a triangle wave. Let's hear the macro in action. <laughs> So 
so we have a different character to play with uh, automations. For the third macro, I wanted to bring in the comb filter that I selected uh, for the filter number two, and a little bit the phaser that we have not uh, used yet. So I will assign it to the filter number two mix by full amount, and then to the phaser mix by 20%. <laughs> So it's another tone variation in the sound with a more metallic uh, effect. For our final macro, I've called it the cipher macro to reflect the name of the pack. I usually want to uh, create a more creative macro which uh, transforms uh, the sound uh, in a more creative way. I've assigned it first to the filter effects cutoff by a positive value of uh, 17.5 or so, to the distortion drive by a negative value, so there is uh, less distortion in this variation, to the distortion filter cutoff, so it's uh, more opened, to the OSC1 band, to the OSC3 wavetable position, and finally to the LFO tempo, so it will act uh, slower. Let's hear it uh, in action. Yeah, there are a lot of cool sweet spots in this macro you can play with. Also in combination with other macros later, you can get a lot of different tones. Finally, let's put the mod wheel into play so that we have an extra parameter to play with later. I've messed up with the chorus effect to have a different variation. So I went for a, a little bit higher mix, feedback and a different tempo. Also. Let's use now the FM from oscillator number one that we have not uh, employed yet. So let's assign the mod wheel to it uh, by full amount. So we have a more gritty variation of the sound. <laughs> and finally, to the OSC1 vocode by negative uh, 0.2, uh, something like that, and to the tempo of the right channel of the delay. And this is how it sounds. So this is it, I hope you enjoyed the process, you learned something new and you are eager to experiment a bit more on your own to come up with your own original sound. Feel free to give a like, to subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this in the future, it definitely helps and doesn't cost to you. If you have any questions regarding the process or regarding anything you have in mind, and yeah, see you the next time. Oh, I'm in touch.